Hi, it's Leslie, Married at First Sight After Party. And of course, I'm here with my drink, which is so needed after a long week. So they have Clint, Aris, and Dominique, three people who are struggling with attraction for their spouses. But let's just start off with their look. Dominique looks gorgeous. I mean, she's gorgeous and she looks gorgeous there. I mean, Aris, I don't know who dressed him, very stylish, kind of very dapper. He looks cool. And then Clint is given that I'm a cool guy and I'm adventurous and I am just all about that with his work boots. I don't know if I'm just gullible, but I am so confused by this whole Clint and Gina situation. First, I was all Gina. Now I'm like somewhere in between. I need you to comment below. Tell me where you're feeling it because at first I was like, oh my God, Clint is so obnoxious. Granted, I don't like him, so I'm very prejudiced. But Gina was rude to begin with. And then it just, I don't know if it's just editing, but it looked like they had Clint just kind of firing back at her. Granted, he did it in a public situation, which is all the more worse. But now at the after party, we are learning that um, the conversation was going on and, and Gina started it saying that we're both not attracted to each other. He's not attracted to this and I'm not attracted to that, meaning she's not attracted to gingers, he's not attracted to heavier non-athletic girls that aren't slender. I feel like, I don't know if I'm just very gullible at this point, but I feel like Gina's looking for an out. She is not attracted to him, so she is putting it out there that, you know what, I'm not attracted to him, but you know what, he's not attracted to me either, so that makes it okay. But the bottom line is, Clint, for whatever he says that he wasn't attracted to her, he was attracted to her. Remember, he's in his sexual prime. He wanted to sleep with her that night, but he didn't want his kids to see that because that would be a bad, uh, you know, representation of him. He was super attracted to her. He said she was gorgeous, so he's bullshitting right now. But Clint is here for damage control, just like Gina. He can't blame him. But I don't know if it's just working on me. Am I just gullible? Because it is working on me. I'm almost feeling like Gina has played him a little bit. She's not feeling it. So to, to make it seem like, you know, it's not just me. It's both of us. And we hear from the others that Gina did start that conversation with saying how they weren't both attracted to each other. And Clint just kind of followed it up. I still don't like him. Ew. He seems like a nut job. I mean, I can... The clip of him after she looks for some sort of apology or remorse for his comments and he gave none and then he kind of mouths off. That just screamed to me, nut job. Why didn't the experts flag him as, as a nut job and kick him out? But they didn't. They let him through. I don't know. I'm just on the fence with this one. I don't even know where to turn. I realize editing can do wonders. And we also have to keep in mind that this whole after party from prior seasons, I've learned it is not, it does not happen immediately after that episode. It is weeks later. It is weeks later. Clint doesn't even look like a, like a ginger anymore. His hair looks brown. It's weeks later, so they are reflecting back, so many things could have happened over that time. But this kind of just sums it up. Clint, for you, my question would be, what is intimacy like with your spouse? Zero. Oh, okay. There's zero intimacy. We have, we're just not, we're not anywhere near that level. So this has obviously had effect all this drama. The bottom line is, she didn't want him. He got upset. He can't want her now without looking like a fool, so he's decided he doesn't want her either. They both don't want each other. That's a wrap. There's no intimacy. I'm sure it's just like in the bag. This one is just a total crap. It's in the crapper, this one. And I know this is a fault of mine, but I'm starting to question Gina, too. You know, as I've said in prior little episodes, I feel like all these people have different motivations for going on this show. Some for wanting the best reason because they want to find love, true love in their, their person and everything. And then there's that group of people. We just don't know which person falls into what group that is there because their agent said, hey, this is a good thing to help your... Uh, help your brand, help you move along in this acting career, whatever you're striving to do in this, in this industry. Anyway, I'm just wondering if Gina, like Clint said, is out there to push her salon or whatever else to get a little publicity to help her salon because I went down the rabbit hole on the old internet 
of people researching her salon. And it does not look like she, it looks a lot different than she is claiming it is. I'm just going to say that. So it makes you wonder if she's, it just makes you wonder how truthful and how sincere she is with this whole thing. It, it all just looks a little sketchy. But if nothing else, we've all learned that ginger is a derogatory term. I did not know that. Granted, I am i don't know a lot of things. I get it, you know, but who knew? Who knew? I think it's only derogatory because he's sensitive and he's insecure. Just own it. You're insecure, whatever, you know. But I did have a very big revelation watching this after party and it has to do with something else that they were alluding to that happens in the season and I will get to that momentarily but before I get into all this and I go on to the other couples please subscribe and help my channel and hit that like or dislike button but anyway let's move on to Aries and Jasmine and it's so sad to say, I mean, there is Aris laying on the table in his shorts and everything, and Jasmine is like rubbing him down with all the things. I feel like this is the most um, touch we've done since meeting each other, wouldn't you agree? Yes, I would agree. Besides cuddling, we haven't like rubbed each other down or anything like that. Right. If he is not feeling anything for her in that moment, this is a doomed relationship because that should have ignited something. And if it didn't, it's a wrap. It's a wrap on those two, unfortunately. And just analyzing this whole thing. I mean, he says he, he knows she's pretty aesthetically. She is pretty. She's won beauty contests. Great. Um, and he thinks she's a nice person, but to have that attraction, they all have to jive together. And I don't get that things, you can have one without the other usually if you, I don't know. Anyway, he is not sexually attracted to her is the bottom line of it all. Ouch. And this is even more alarming to the fact that when he started this and they asked him when was the last time he had sex and he said two weeks ago. So this guy, rough estimate, hasn't had sex in three weeks and I'm thinking anything would be looking good right about now and she's not. Oh my God, if you're out in the desert and someone comes with a little cup of water, oh my God, it's going to be the best taste of water in the world. Yet she's not. I don't know. Now on to Dominique and Mac. I mean, Mac and this will, at the end of this, I will give my prediction about something to come. It just, it was very enlightening as I was watching this after party episode. Dominique and Mac, I mean, she's beautiful. She's a big girl. Mac is cute. She says he, she's attracted to him that he is cute. I get it. He is cute and she is pretty, but he's annoying. He complains. He's not into things. She's adventurous and he is not. And he's like a downer and his sense of humor would get old. I mean, maybe someone would appreciate it, whatever. They're just not vibing. That's the bottom line. I appreciate Mac's, Mac's apology. He gave her that, you know, he needs to do better. I appreciate that. Just do better. You, you shouldn't have to apologize. You should have been up for this when, when you started this little event thingy of married at first sight, but whatever. So again, another couple struggling with the attraction. That's just what the season's made of. But what's curious, and it just, it, it could have hit me like a ton of bricks. There's Clint over there in all his suave outdoorness and adventureness saying how he wants a girl that's adventurous and, and outdoorsy and wants to do things. And there's Dominique over there saying, Mac doesn't want to do anything. I want someone that's adventurous. Hmm. Because if you watched my last episode, which you probably did not, I was predicting that Gina would be hit on by Mac because Mac made the comment how beautiful and sexy she was and how convenient that would be because you know what? Dominique and Clint are a much better match. They should hire me. These experts need to consult with me. They would be a much better match, except for the fact that she is a little bit of a bigger girl. But who cares? She's gorgeous. He's, he can get over that. He is no, he's no Don Juan himself, Lord knows. So, you know, it's probably the best looking girl he's ever gotten. Anyway, I digress. I don't know. This was crazy. I swear, I feel like I learn more in these after parties because the episodes are so edited, they really can can make it seem like whatever they want. I think Gina was a jerk for saying all that. You don't need to say that. Um, I don't care how comfortable you are in a conversation. You don't say that. That's just, you know. Um, but I think Clint got offended. But 
I don't know. I mean, if he was honest, he would say, I was very attracted to you. He wanted to sleep with her like on the first night of the wedding. So come on, you can't take that back. But he got offended and he lashed out. He did it in public, big mistake, because then other people hear it and they can like chime in and you just get the onslaught of all of that. So he looks like a shit. Um, but I honestly, I think the two of them are just not, both of them are not great. So there you go. I don't know. I want to hear from you guys. This is the episode I would love to do live so I could get some interaction because I feel like I'm so easily swayed one way and then the other. And I'm like, am I just so gullible? I don't even know. But I would love to hear your feedback of which one you think is in the wrong or who's going to come out of this looking better than the other. I don't even know. And I don't even know which one I like more than the other. I think they're both slime. I think they both have an agenda. Anyway, that's my recap of this Married at First After Party. If you like my recap, please subscribe and help my channel or hit like or dislike. And I will see you next week because I am all into this stuff. Anyway, see you later. Bye.